is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Hi! <laughs> my name is Carmen, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I will list all of the other things right here. It's been quite a while since I've recorded an actual podcast. I've had some videos here and there, such as the EYF video, uh, which is Edinburgh Yarn Fest, um, and the Wooly Goodies video, which was basically the Edinburgh Yarn Fest haul. <laughs> um, so I've not been completely silent on the YouTube front, and of course I've had extra videos for my patrons on my Patreon page. Uh, but I'm back with a brand new podcast, and boy do I have a lot to show you, because... I have knit so much. <laughs> oh, it's almost insane. So you might be able to see right here some of my new acquisitions. The pink sweater was already finished, but I'm not sure if I've already properly shown you. So it's also included in this pile. So um, I think we'll just jump right in with the sweaters, right? Um, or, no, wait, let me do, let me do uh, one other thing up front. Um, so, because the sweaters will go into the sweaters I want to knit part of the podcast. So, I will start with another FO first, which is actually not knit by me, but by my boyfriend, Tim. <laughs> it's his very first hat. And you might know this hat because it featured in the Edinburgh Yarn Fest vlog. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, in the Edinburgh Yarn Fest vlog, not in the Wooly Goodies vlog. So this yarn uh, we picked up at the booth uh, of Ginger Twist Studio. And uh, it's Aaron weight, I think. I think it's Aaron weight. So quite bulky and he could knit it on large needles. And uh, he had quite a bit of fun knitting this, um, although he's not sure if he will ever knit again. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's quite a quite a cute hat. So when I asked him what kind of a hat he would like to knit, he said, "I really want a thick fabric, uh, like a really bulky fabric to keep me warm." And so I. I thought of garter stitch but then I thought okay garter stitch and a hat means you knit one row ra round and then purl one round which is not really what you what you want to be doing as a beginner knitter so what we did so I did a provisional cast on for him so he would have to uh, so he could just start at the main uh, body of the hat and not knit the ribbing first because yeah I just wanted him to ease into it so uh, the main body of the hat uh, he starts with a knit row round I always say row and then where is it here there you can see there is a line here and um, so he knit one round and then I taught him how to do a German short row heel, not short row heel, a German short row stitch and then turn around um, like on the wrong side so he could just um, turn each row round and uh, just, just knit every round but still end up with a garter stitch hat and I think that was really um, really nice. So he would knit to the end of the round, and then um, he would turn his work, do a German short row stitch, and then knit around that side. Um, it's really difficult to explain it like this, but uh, it was very straightforward for him, and then we did some decreasing at the top. And then actually it turned out that we had some extra yarn left over, so uh, we knit a little bit more um, in garter stitch and before uh, doing the ribbing. 
and it actually worked out quite well. Um, so he used one skein of Aran weight and then um, two skeins of double net held together, which also is kind of Aran weight. Um, so the ribbing is actually the DK held together, but um, you don't really see that it's a different base. So I think that worked out perfectly, especially considering it's his first hat project. And um, yeah, he's just really proud of it. I'm proud of him, so yay. <clears throat> and of course, afterwards, I wanted to knit a hat as well. Now I am going to show you the swatch. Um, I finished the hat already, although I do need to block it, but um, I have put a little video up uh, on my Patreon page uh, because this hat will be part of a masterclass on color work I will be doing later this year and um, I will be filming loads of tutorials on how to pick your yarn, how to pick your colors, how uh, which needles to use, um, how do you fix your gauge, um, how, how to get those um, stitches straight, how to hold your yarn, everything. And so I thought I'd come up with a fun pattern um, to knit during the masterclass. And this is the swatch uh, that I've made. So the yarn is Hey Mama Wolf in the New Bird colorway and West Wool in the Glass colorway. And although they are, um, uh, they are not perfectly contrasting with each other, I still think it's uh, it turned out beautifully. Um, although the swatch, I let it soak for a bit too long and there is some color bleeding here and there, but um, I'll just have to make sure that on the actual hat I don't let it soak for too long or I just spray it. Um, so that the colors don't run. Uh, yeah, but so this is the swatch and um, the hat is, it's so good. I mean, I have an idea of how it will turn out, but it has surpassed all of my expectations. So it's really, really pretty and I can't wait to share. Uh, so I've shared it on my Patreon page already and um, because it is going to be a project for my Patreon page. So the Colorwork Masterclass, uh, it will consist of three modules and each module uh, will have different parts uh, and then you'll get a PDF per module. And these videos will really um, get you started with color work and also will build your confidence around color work. I will show you how to fix color work mistakes so you don't necessarily have to rip back, uh, but you might just be able to fix some color placement in the row above. Um, and yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. And this is one of the patterns that will be featured in the masterclass. Um, so be sure to um, check out my Patreon page if you're interested in that. And I also have a newsletter as of last week. Um, so if you go to my blog, which is newleafdesigns.nl, or if you go to my Instagram and then my link tree, which is the little link right in my profile. Uh, I have a link tree, pictures loading, there it is. And the very first um, uh, bar right there is how you can sign up for my newsletter. So if I have any new projects or patterns or uh, videos coming out, the um, the newsletter will tell you all about those. So if you want to stay in the, in the loop, um, <laughs> in the loop, um, be sure to sign up for my newsletter. And another thing that I wanted to mention before I get into the nitty gritty of this episode, that also has to do with my Patreon page and with my patterns, is that um, I will be donating 
uh, 100% of the new patron pledges I get in the month of May. So 100% of that and 50% of all my pattern sales in May, I will be donating that to the Sri Lanka Red Cross Society. Um, I got the link via Kynhelm on uh, Instagram, who I believe is Helen. Yes, Helen. Um, thank you so much for sharing that link. So um, Sri Lanka has suffered um, tremendously because of the bombings of the church and the hotels. And um, I wanted to just give a little bit, um, I mean, uh, we have this saying in Dutch, but it doesn't really convert to English. Um, to just kind of do something at least. So uh, I am giving 100% of my new patron pledges in May and 50% of my pattern sales in May. I'll be donating that to the Sri Lanka Red Cross Society. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the first time that I'm doing a donation like this. So I will be very, very grateful if you decide to uh, take part in this, if you want to become a patron or if you want to buy a pattern. Um, so with pattern sales, I mean the raffle resales because it's really uh, easy for me to keep track of the raffle resales. Um, I also have patterns on my website, but these won't count towards the donation since it's kind of difficult to keep track of uh, all of those places. So just the Patreon and the Ravelry patterns will count towards the donation. And um, for Patreon, uh, if you become a patron in May, you won't actually be charged until June 1st. But, you know, uh, so and you will get an email from Patreon once you are charged. So so if you only want to pledge for one month, you can just wait until you receive the email and then delete your pledge in May uh, in June or um or you can continue to be a patron, which of course I would really much appreciate. Um so I um I hope a lot of people will, will participate and uh, so I can donate uh, to the Sri Lankan Red Cross Society. Okay, so the sweaters. <laughs> so I have knit, I have finished these two sweaters since last time. And the first one is the Enchanted Mesa sweater by Stephen West. So I knit this in Scapius Whirly Gig, which is a gradient yarn cake, uh, and I added one of the solid colors, which is this minty color, and that's called the Whirly Gigette. <laughs> uh, so the Whirly Gig is uh, a really big 450 gram yarn cake, so this one runs from this really light yellow to this um, teal petrol shade right here and uh, along the way I've saved kind of bits and bobs from every color so that I could use those on the sleeves and as detail throughout the body um, and here in where is it <laughs> and in the other sleeve I decided to use uh, a bit more of the minty green again um, and I'm just really pleased with this sweater. So it's it's super super soft. It's uh, alpaca and merino. Um, it's really warm. I love the color changes. I love the texture. I put in some uh, moss stitch here as well. Um, yeah, just really really pleased with it. And I also um, recorded a little clip, so I'll be putting in that here. So. Um, you can see that the construction is kind of weird. <laughs> uh, I mean, one sleeve starts higher than the other, but um, it's a really interesting construction and it doesn't make it very wearable, honestly. I don't think it, I would wear this to the office, for example, but um, it is really cozy and um, yeah. I just love wearing it. And I love all of the texture detail on the body and on the sleeves as well. So yeah, really happy with this sweater. Um, I used almost all of the um, Scapy Swirly Gig 
and uh, just a little bit of the whirly gigat. So I still have a little bit left over of that. Um, it's a DK weight yarn and I used 3.5 millimeter needles. I think, yes, 3.5, which is a little bit tighter than the pattern says. Um, so the pattern is by Stephen West and um, I know that he always knits really loose, but still, Oh, I have to do reverse gauge math on this. So if he knits really loose, then his gauge is really big, but I don't know. So I count myself as a loose knitter as well. Uh, and ha I had to go down a couple of needle sizes before I got the gauge I wanted, which is a little bit tighter than the gauge in the pattern. Uh, because, well, although I got the gauge in the pattern with stockinette, uh, when, um, when I actually started to do the main body, which is garter stitch, it was just too big. Um, just too, like, not dense enough. So, so I switched, uh, from 4 millimeter to a 3.5 millimeter, um, so... The cowl is knit on bigger needles than the sweater, but I don't really think that matters because this is garter stitch and this is stockinette stitch, so it will have a little bit of difference um, in gauge to begin with. So um, I think if I would make it, if I would knit it again, I would um, modify it so that the sleeve right here that it comes up a little bit higher and I would uh, allow for more room in the front because um, well from the pattern it isn't really clear what is the front and what is the back of the sweater and you know on a male body it's not really an issue but on a female body you know um, you kind of need more room in the front than in the back and it, it just sometimes the fit is kind of awkward in that way um so i really have to continue like pulling pulling the sweater and because it's alpaca and garter stitch it does have a lot of give uh but i don't want to be tugging at my sweater the whole day so I'm kind of on the fence about this sweater, but uh, I do love wearing it, but I won't be wearing it uh, to non-nitty occasions. So I wore it to Edinburgh Yarn Fest. Uh, I will wear it to other craft fairs or when I see my knitting friends, but I won't wear it to work. Um, and that's a bit of a bummer. Yeah, because I do really like the color. And the yarn is just super soft and I would I would use it again uh, on another sweater. So uh, the Whirly Gig yarn is uh, around 80 euros for a ball, but that is 450 grams. So actually it comes quite close to indie dyed yarn, even, even cheaper than that actually. Um, so it would be around 17 euro per 100 grams which is kind of okay um and taking into account that it is a big gradient yarn cake i have another one lying around just let me show you because it is i am more of a visual person so i'm just gonna get it see i think this helps with visualizing things so this is another one um so you can really see the gradient. Um, mine was also teal on the outside and then yellow on the inside and then so I did several sections uh, with the outside. So you can see the yellow, <clears throat> sorry, the yellow is uh, what I used from the inside and then the contrast stripes there, those are from the outside. And that was really fun. Um, and so let's see, so the content is 20% alpaca and 80% virgin wool. Oh, sorry, I said merino earlier, but it's virgin wool. 
uh, and it has a thousand meters on here so taking account that it's 450 grams that makes it around DK2 worsted weight I think yeah and uh, yeah it's beautiful and uh, so a little disclaimer uh, I was gifted this yarn by Scapius to work with and um, but the opinions all are all my own so um, um, just a little disclaimer uh, so this is the whirly gig and this is the whirly gigette which is 100 grams and it's a solid color and these are 14.95 um, and this is the same content so 20% alpaca 20 uh, and 80% virgin wool I will be designing something else with this so stay tuned for that uh, although it probably won't be for another couple of months um, okay so that was the Enchanted Mesa sweater one thing I do want to say um, because I didn't know this before buying the pattern is that the pattern is just in one size uh, but Stephen uses gauge to um, to account for other sizes so he says if you want a size this then you should use DK yarn and this gauge if you want to size this then you should use worsted weight yarn and this gauge so uh, I wish I'd known before I bought the pattern and it probably was there on the info page but I just didn't read it but I just wanted to uh, say that um, because I did think it was going to be a fully graded pattern but it wasn't um, so I just thought I would tell you um, the next pattern the next sweater is the no frills sweater by petite knit which has been on my needles for a while uh, I have started this last year and then I picked it up again in February or March this year and uh, I had to rip back until just after the ribbing because I had done one too many short rows and it just messed up my whole uh, stitch count uh, so I had to do that again um, I think it's grown a little bit since blocking but uh, it's meant to be a oversized sweater anyway and it's um, it's so lovely it's um, I want to wear it right now um, so this is Debbie Bliss um, tweed something Oh god, it's been too long. Donegal tweed? Fine Donegal tweed. Uh, held together with stranded dye works mohair in the metal sun colorway, uh, which has created this lovely, lovely color. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, I don't remember which size that I knit, but it's in my Ravelry project page. It's probably the small or medium size uh, I'm really happy with the fit um, it's just I don't know I think it's even though it's oversized I think it's really flattering for some reason um, and it keeps me warm and I love the length and the ribbing here as well I, I love long ribbing Although this isn't that long, but yeah. Um, so one thing I will say about the pattern that it isn't completely clear, but um, and that's why I kind of messed up on the short rows because it says repeat, repeat a total of four times or five times and then I I repeated it for those times but it actually meant repeat until you have four repeats of the short row so so um so I I had done one too many and with short rows I cannot simply 
rip back one round because it doesn't go around so it was just uh, confusing so I just had to rip back until the beginning and then just pay attention and count my stitches um, but other than that I found it to be relatively um, easy to understand uh, I did pick up more stitches at the underarm because um, I found that the pattern said you know um, pick up this amount of stitches and I thought it was way I thought that was not enough so otherwise I would get a lot of holes here so I picked up more stitches and then I decreased those I don't know if I uh, did the same decreases in the pattern or that I did more decreases I can't remember I think I did them according to the pattern um, yeah I think I think that was it um, so really happy with the sweater I wear it on jeans I wear it on skirts uh, although I actually just have one, no, I have two skirts, <laughs> um, and I can wear it over dresses as well, so it's just a really wearable sweater for me, even to the office, and, uh, I wore it a lot, uh, after Edinburgh, I finished it just on the ferry home from, uh, from Newcastle, and, um, we have been uh to germany after that and it snowed even in the weekend so i was really happy that i had my mohair sweater with me um it kept me wonderfully warm and uh, i just love wearing it and i wish i could wear it every day <laughs> um yeah it's just it might be the most wearable piece that i have right now um for which i'm really 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 grateful so uh, I definitely recommend the No Frills sweater. Um, then another sweater with mohair, which is my own The Pink sweater. <laughs> so The Pink sweater is inspired by Janelle Monae's song Pink, uh, Pink with a Y. And uh, it's oh, just a delicious song uh, about female, oh, just... How do you how do you say this? Female empowerment about women about ah, just um, it's a wonderful um, song and video. So the pink sweater is based on that or inspired by that, and um, because uh, there is this one line in the song where where they say, uh, "Boy, it's cool if you got the blues, we got the pink," and for me that kind of meant that the pink is kind of the opposite the blues the blues meaning really gloomy feeling and then the pink would be the happiest feeling ever and um for me this sweater is the embodiment of that feeling um and it makes me feel so good when i wear this um, I think mainly about the color because it is really, you know, it's a really, really bright color um, and I love it. It's a cropped sweater, although I have included, so it's my own pattern, I have included in instructions on how to make it not cropped uh, since it is bottom up, so I thought to include those uh, instructions because bottom up modification is a little bit different than top down so i thought to include that uh it is a drop shoulder shoulder so the shoulder uh, <laughs> it's a difficult word so the shoulder ends here kind of and then you only knit a really short sleeve uh, i have really short arms so i have included instructions on how to um make the arms longer as well uh, there is an i-cord bind off at the end which I think is really cute and there is a rolled neckline or folded so you knit it twice as long and then you fold it over and as you can see I have a little name tag here as well CJ 
um, it's a it's a boxy fit um, with straight sleeves bell sleeves I don't know and yeah I just really like it so this will be a free pattern which will be up on my blog May 11th but um, the paid PDF will also be available in my Ravelry store if you want a printable PDF um, and or if you want to support me as a designer which is always really much uh, very much appreciated um, so yeah that will be available very very shortly and thank you uh, thank you so much to all of my testers who tested the pattern for me uh, it's just amazing um, to see their versions and it's this is my first real um, garment pattern well you know I've had some garment patterns but <clears throat> this is the first one where I really um, really had to grade the pattern and um, the yarn I used uh, I used two yarns held together uh, which is Scapius Merino soft brush which is a DK yarn that is really soft pink and uh, I held it together with a bright fuchsia mohair which is Scapius rhythm mohair um, and um, uh, I've written uh, I've written some blog posts on the progress for this sweater. You can find those on newleafdesigns.nl if you want to know more about the yarn or more about the process. Um, it's not much of a neat pile now, but anyway. Yeah, and that leads me to sweaters I want in it. So there have been a lot of beautiful sweater patterns published in the last few months and um, I am itching to cast on new sweaters although I've cast on one other garment that I will show you in just a bit so uh, as I've shared before I wanted to I want to knit the ice flowers sweater by sustainablist um, which is a beautiful color work sweater um, and the color work is not too seasonal or Christmassy, so I thought this was really, really beautiful. Um, uh, and I have some yarn by uh, Beehive Yarns that I want to use for that, and some um, solid colored yarn. So that one's on my list for sweaters to knit, uh, although I will probably wait a little while to, until maybe autumn to cast that one on. Uh, another one is the My Boy Lollipop sweater by Nancy Ritchie, who is getting pearly with it. And uh, the My Boy Lollipop sweater is a cap sleeve um, cropped sweater, uh, really fitted. Um, it's just, it looks so good on her that um, even though I kind of dis kind of dislike fitted sweaters, I kind of want to knit it. So uh, I've picked my yarn. I've I have multiple yarn options for this top, so I might be knitting more. But the first one I will be knitting in Show Real Studios yarn, which is a yarn brand by Carrie, who is Carrie Monster Knits on um, Instagram. So this is Show Real Studios, and this is the Delectable DK in the Slewfoot Sue colorway. And Slewfoot Sue is a uh, Texas cartoon, Texan cartoon and uh, it's, it's just so cute so it's kind of like this Texan Betty Boop um, um, I don't know if she's a cowgirl I don't I don't know but she has these kind of uh, like these dresses it's so so cute um, so this is a colorway inspired by her and um, and I have two skeins of this yarn, which is exactly what I need for the My, Mo My Boy Lollipop sweater. So I will be casting that one on. There's a cowl. It just started May 1st. So if you want to get into this cowl, 
then do it. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a really quick pattern. Um, so go ahead and look it up. My Boy Lollipop by Nancy Ritchie. And uh, just yesterday or the, or the day before, I saw that uh, Jennifer Steingas, who is Knit Love Wool on Instagram, has come out with a new pattern uh, for a sweater, and it's called the New Leaf Sweater. So I have to knit that. I just have to. There is no other way. <laughs> I'm going to have to knit that sweater because New Leaf Sweater needs to be on the New Leaf Podcast. So I haven't looked at any yarn for that, um, so who knows, but I will be knitting that. And another sweater pattern that I really want to get on my needles is the Le Clair Pullover by Caitlin, who is Wool Jewel on Instagram, and she also has a Wool Jewel podcast. Um, Le Clair is a beautiful um, lace work sweater with a, a big lace pattern all over, and I think it's using DK yarn, so I think it will fly by because lace is quick and DK just... Ugh. It, this will be an amazing quick sweater. Um, so I will be looking forward to that. Uh, although I don't have any large quantities of solid color to DK yarn at the moment, or at least I don't think. Well, other than the yarn that's already reserved for projects. So I will be looking for some yarn for that because it is amazing. Um, I don't know if I want to do it really oversized or a little bit more uh, fitted. Not quite sure. So, um, but it looks amazing either way. I've seen, I've seen Caitlin share pictures from her testers and it's just... It's so good, and um, Caitlin is has been really good with her sizing as well. So uh, the Leclerc pullover is available for a large range of sizes. So go ahead and check that out. And of course, the SFT by Shay Johnson, who is Knit and Crochet on Instagram. I love that username. Um, uh, I really, really want to knit this, so I am still on the fence. I think I'm going to modify it a little bit so it has long sleeves. So if you don't know, it's uh, it has mohair v-neck, basically. So it's, um, I think it's DK or Aran yarn for the body, and then it's mohair up until the neck. And it's uh, sh just a short sleeve, but I actually want to continue the sleeve so that it has a little mohair uh, band up here, like a mohair, how do you call this? Um, like a strip, strip of mohair. But so I think I want to knit that in rows. I think I want to knit the arms in rows, so I knit, knit it in the um, normal, yarn first in the main yarn and then uh, in the mohair and then in the main yarn again and then and then attach it to um, to the body I think I think uh, I'm not quite sure but um, I'm actually uh, I'm trying to see if I can do it in fingering weight as well so a lot of modifications but I just I'm really excited about um, about this project and uh, I just need some more time to think about how I will how I will knit it um, so that it becomes more wearable for me because um, I think if I knit something with mohair up until the neck and then with short sleeves I think it won't be really suitable for the weather here so um, I just want to modify it a little bit so I can get more wear out of it yeah, so, so much for wish knitting. Let's get on with what I have been knitting these past couple of weeks. So, um, whew, I still have a couple of whips to go, so bear with me. Um, yes, and as you might have known from the title of this episode, the Tanya is back. I have cast it on again. So the Tanya is a top by Caitlin Hunter, who is Boyland Knitworks. Um, and I knit on this last year. But uh, I had made some miscalculations and it was turning out too big for me. So um, I had to frog it all. And I was almost done. 
and uh, so I had to frog it all. And I have cast it on last week, I think, and this is what I have done so far. So the lace portion is is done. It looks horrible right now because I haven't blocked it, but uh, the lace portion is done and I will be continuing on the body. I think next week uh, I will be going on a short holiday to Egypt to go diving and um, I think I will uh, take this with me for some stockinette knitting. Keeping this in my bag from Bali, which I love. And the yarn is from Chestnut Cabin, who is a Dutch indie dyer. And this is her uh, chocolate cinnamon fudge brownie colorway which is delicious and beautiful. I love all of the colors in here. There are some grays, some yellows, some greens, some reds, uh, just, it's like a chocolate rainbow, almost, almost. So maybe I'll show you my swatch. See all of those colors? So yummy. Yeah, really, really nice. So, um, and I think this is her yak base. There is some yak in here, I think. Um, yeah, so not much else to say about this because I just want to get it kind of over with, but I am really enjoying the net, although I took out most of the pearl stitches because I don't, um, like the effect that it has on lace so i did keep the pearl stitches in between the motifs like here and there but i um the pearl stitches in the motif i checked those out so uh that's why it might look a little bit different and i don't have the uh pearl uh rose all across the body so um, just because, I don't know, just because I didn't like those. Um, so I thought to modify that a little bit. Another garment that I have cast on, well, it's a crochet project, so I'm not sure if I can say cast on, but, um, that I have started, I've started this in my, um, during our weekend to Germany, um, is my greenhouse top so this is actually kind of a tank top um and it's a pattern from scapius yarn bookazine and it's my own pattern it's on the cover right there so the original is in this uh, solid uh, green colorway but I decided to make it again in a lot of colors. So here it is. It's just perfect to wear uh, on top of your bikini or bathing suit. Um, yeah, and I thought to just uh, make it again in lots of colors. So uh, it, this is going quite quickly actually, because this was progress from two or three days. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. It's a linen yarn, uh, which is Scapey's Linen Soft, and I'm using basically scraps, so I'm just working from stash. Um, yeah, and I'm really enjoying that. Uh, I'm trying to use a new color every, um, row, and, um, is making me really happy so I will be working on that as well because I really love working with linen or cotton in summer okay so I had to recharge my battery so I'm back with a cardigan this time because it got cold so yeah in continuity in my podcast but anyway so my last whip my last two whips are both the same project Right, they are two pairs of socks and they are exactly the same pattern, but they look vastly different. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Um, wondering if I should show you the 
plain version or the color work version first? I think I'm going to show you the plain version first because I think then it will be more exciting to see the color work version. Okay, so let's first appreciate this bag, which is covered in drawings of cats, which is so cute. I got this from my friend Yelena, who is also a Scapies blogger, and um, I love it so much. Thank you, Yelena. It's so cute. So, I am knitting on a sock, and I bought this yarn at Sticks and Cups Yarn Shop in Utrecht, uh, which is owned by Lily, and this yarn is hand dyed by Lily's mother. Uh, and it's this beautiful, beautiful purple. Uh, I love this lavender purple shade, and it has blues and white and uh, a little like dark spots of purple as well which i love not sure if i have the tag in here anymore but um yeah it's not in here anymore but uh you can get this hand dyed yarn at sticks and cups um in utrecht they also have an online shop i believe or just message Lily. She's also Sticks and Cups on, or Sticks Cups on Instagram. Let me just quickly check for you. Sticks. Yeah, Sticks Cups. So that's her on Instagram. Um, and I'm knitting a sock. And uh, why is this? Oh, this is the beginning of the round progress keeper. Or beginning of the round marker which is a stitch marker by my friend Nerissa who is Miss Nerissa on Instagram and uh, she has uh, some very clever stitch markers because they match the um, colors of clover uh, crochet hooks which is really really handy because for crochet hooks when you are uh, in a project you don't keep the, the needle in your stitches so you can take it out, use it on a different project. But then when you come back to the project, you're like, what needle size did I use for this? And if you then use the same color as the stitch marker, then, you know, it's really easy. So that was really clever. But uh, I like them so much that I also use them on my knitting projects. So that is the beginning of round marker. Let me just move that up a bit. This has just been such a um, addictive project <laughs> that I forget to move my marker. Um, yeah, so this sock has a really awesome texture. So um, let me see if I can show you because I am not used on I'm not used to uh, knitting on DPNs, and uh, I'm really scared of the stitches sliding off. Uh, but look at that stitch texture. Do you see that? Oh, it's delicious, isn't it? Delicious. I love it. So this is my lunch project uh, that I bring uh, with me to work and I work on it during my lunch break. Uh, so I did a two by two rib. So this is actually my first cuff down sock in a while. Um, I usually only knit um, toe up, but yeah. And I really like the yarn as well. Beautiful color. And I think I might start the um, heel sooner or later. Uh, and I think I'm gonna go for a heel flap and guess it this time. Uh, I think I'm going to use that one from Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern because uh, I really like that uh, with a little garter stitch detail on the edge. Um, that will go really nicely with this texture pattern. You can't really see it because of the yarn, but um, it's just so nice to have a little bit of texture in your sock. 
So this is my solid colored, well not solid colored, but um, um, not color work version. Uh, so let me just keep that in here while I show you the color work version, which I'm really excited about because, uh, so this texture pattern uses pearls, pearl stitches. And uh, in color work, you usually don't use pearl stitches. But uh, while I was at the Knit and Not Fair a couple of weeks ago, I attended a workshop on bohus knitting or bohus stickning, uh, which I'm sure is not the pronu correct pronunciation. It's a Swedish uh, knitting technique or knitting style, and it uses pearl stitches in color work, which is fascinating. And uh, I'm not sure where I have my swatch from the actual workshop, which was just loads of fun. Uh, and we got to work with hand-dyed yarn um, by Lorette Garman. And um, the workshop, I should say, uh, was um, organized by Broodje Breie, which is kind of uh, a sandwich of knitting, a knitting sandwich. Just just as a kind of knitting snack, um, uh, or at least that's my interpretation of the Dutch term, kind of like um, just a little taste of a, of a technique. They had lots of workshops. I also attended one workshop on Irish lace crochet, which was amazing. And um, yeah, but I really like this Boha's uh, knitting technique as well. So I'm gonna show you what the color work looks like without any pearl stitches. This is the um, the sole of the foot. Looks like this. And then the pearl side looks like this. Isn't that interesting? I love this. Just look at how different it is compared to this. And I have a swatch somewhere from the workshop, but I guess I'll show you at a, another time. Oh, but I really, really like this. And so, this is exactly the same pattern. Um, but it looks completely different because of the color work. See, it's... I, I just love this. I, um, I, I don't really know what to say about my pattern, but um, so... I will publish this pattern uh, soon in my Ravelry store uh, and you can knit it either way. I mean, uh, it's um, it's a very addictive pattern um, and I'm not sure which version I like more. I mean, the solid colored version is a little bit more mindless, whereas the color work version uh, takes up a little more uh, brain power to knit, but as she as she have to keep track of the colors, but um, it's still really really fun. And as you can see, uh, I'm using two variegated yarns here, um, so you can see better on this side. So uh, the contrast yarn is um, light orange here and a pink here and then the main yarn is um, kind of orange purple and doesn't change that much throughout but still there are some subtle uh, variations uh, and I'm keeping this in my the blue rabbit house bag um, which I got at Edinburgh Yarn Fest and this, these are the yarns And these yarns are uh, Skipius R-Tribe 
uh, in Hakmarak colorway and uh, Yelena Creations colorway. Um, <laughs> getting my yarn in a tangle. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really enjoying this project. Um, and yeah, it just, it's been really entertaining uh, to have the, the color work version and the non-color work version uh, as a whip at the same time. I think the color work version I will work with a German short row heel just because I think that's easier with color work and for this one the heel flop and gusset. Um, yeah, really excited. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't know when I will have this pattern released but you will know. Um, and you will know especially quickly if you sign up to my newsletter as i said <laughs> um yeah but it will be available soon and i believe that that is all of my whips i think so so we have the tenya we have the greenhouse top the two socks oh right and then there's this um this secret project that I can't tell you about. Uh, I did reveal a little bit of information on my Patreon page because I always show a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. Um, so again, if, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, if you're interested in the design talk behind, um, behind a project, then go over to my Patreon page for all of the extra content that I'm offering there. Uh, it's available for two th from two dollars a month, so that's virtually nothing. And in May, I will be donating 100% of the new patron pledges to Sri Lankan Red Cross. So please consider it, and um, I'll be very, very grateful if you do. Um, and I quickly wanted to mention where I got this piece of jewelry from, as it's also a handmade, and it's a pair of scissors. So I think um you'll probably like it as well this is actually an anniversary gift from my boyfriend um we are together for 10 years now uh on april 22nd and um yeah we we celebrated um uh by going to a, a really good japanese restaurant and he gave me this beautiful necklace which is handmade um, and it's by Studio MHL, uh, which is a maker from Amsterdam. So go over and check them out. They also have really cute, um, uh, not oyster, but, um, uh, my mind is blanking. So, um, Oh, mussels, that's what it is. So, um, mussel clams uh, as a necklace. But it, it sounds disgusting, but it's really, really cute. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really happy with it. I'm still wearing my leaf necklace, though. But I think that they go together quite well. So, yeah, I think that was all. Uh, I need to get on with uh, some other work right now. Um, I need to order some yarn for a new project. Uh, for two new projects, actually. And um, I will be preparing for my holiday in Egypt. Uh, so next week I will be leaving on holiday to Egypt for one week. I will go scuba diving, um, which is so much fun. Um, and a we could potentially see hammerhead sharks. I'm really, really excited. Um, yes, so I think that's all what I wanted to say. Uh, thank you all so, so much for watching and a huge thank you to all of my patrons who make this YouTube channel and all of my designs possible and just way more sustainable for me. Thank you all so much and um, 